Come on, you already know what it is. Do I even need an intro on this video? We're gonna look at the Mecca Mini today. We're gonna see how it still holds up versus the rest of the keyboard market and the custom market at the end of 2019. I'm not even gonna ask. Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Antlion Audio, makers of the Mod Mic. If you need a high quality headset based mic solution that can attach to practically any headphone with an easy on, easy off magnetic clasp, Mod Mic's got a model that will work for you. Mod Mic Uni for universal compatibility with a 3.5 inch jack, Mod Mic USB for exceptional audio quality, and Mod Mic Wireless for high end sound with wireless convenience. Every Mod Mic comes packed in a sturdy travel case with everything you need to mount to two of your favorite headphones with additional mounts and accessories just to click away. The Mod Mic has the flexibility to turn any of your favorite headphones into your new favorite headset. Click the link in the description or check out the mod mic now at antlineaudio.com. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech and today we are finally looking at the long-awaited 1-2 Mecca Mini 60% keyboard from Ducky. Firstly, yes, it's a Ducky 1-2 Mini in a metal case, but that's such an oversimplification of the quality we have here and there are some revisions. The case here is different. It's cast aluminum as opposed to milled or CNC, which we see in a lot of aluminum cases. The difference is it's cast in one piece from a mold. So you can get detail you can't get in other aluminum cases, especially at this price point. That's why we're able to have these curves, these lines and these insets. The case itself obviously feels very solid. It's a heavyweight too, coming in at like 876 grams on my scale. And a move you rarely see on an aluminum case it's got flip down feet single height adjust in this case and i guess looking at early press photos these would have to be plastic in order to be inserted into the case but they are in fact metal these are zinc oxide so you don't have to worry about there being a weak point here this is a tough case all the way around with no plastic molding it leaves us with a floating switch design which i personally like to see and it has really thin bezels all the way around the one too many already had some slim bezels but these are super slim really good look the steel back plate is white again so plenty of rgb pop and the case also reflects light off the inside lip of the edges so the whole thing makes for a great aesthetic that ducky boards are known for it is coated as well they call it nano coating so it's not just bare aluminum you will get some fingerprints and oil but it cleans up easy and it feels really durable it also has the usb-c basically flush mounted so you won't have to worry about any kind of clearance with custom cables you still have access to the dip switches on the bottom switch three changes your cast lock to the function key which i highly recommend for better access to the air arrows on IJKL. Included in the box is the standard 1-2 stuff, so you'll get the dust cover, the USB-C cable, the key puller, and the accent key set. People have wished for a long time that the accent keys were backlit as well, and they've done it. These come randomly in either blue or red, and they have a really similar texture to the stock keycap. So in a subtle flex, it looks like Ducky has cracked the code on their own backlit shine through PBT. Like other shine through PBT out there, the legends here do take on a bit of the tint of the keycap color itself. So when backlit with white, you can see the stock caps throw a little bit of pink and the blue accents have a slight blue tint. When lit with any other color though, the Legends have no problem taking on the color of the backlight, and the Legends are pretty slim and clear with the exception of the arrows, which are a little thicker. Just to have the Ducky logo backlit on the escape key really kind of geeks me out. Awesome job. So this board does include a year of the pig spacebar, and just be aware this is the standard 1-2 mini PCB and not the PCB on the 1-2 SF. So the spacebar lacks the two extra LEDs that we saw on the SF. This will concentrate the lighting on the spacebar to just the center switch. Just something to be aware of. And speaking of switches, Cherry MX flavors here again. I have browns on deck today. It is important to note that the Mecha Mini is still not a hot swap board. Playing the field with and modding switches has become increasingly popular this year, so that may affect your purchase decision. Having a hard soldered board also makes it more difficult to access and mod your stabilizers. Luckily, the Ducky stabs are some of the best in production boards. I only ever see these specific stabs on Ducky boards, so I have to think these are unique to their line. Also of interest is that the stock spacebar is thicker than the custom spacebar. I think it's got the better sound. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. 
In terms of actual gaming and typing, it's amazing, as usual. It sits lower than a Ducky 1 Too Many, so much so that the idea of a wrist rest is pretty much a moot point. I usually run my 1 Too Many's totally flat with a wrist rest, but that's just not the move with this board. The incline is near perfect, though, with the feet down. This definitely feels more rigid to type on than the 1 Too Many, but it's stable, balanced, overall, great experience. In terms of feature set, you still have all the stuff that makes the 1 Too platform great. So you still have different lighting modes, per key lighting, and there's games on board as well. You still have access to the ducky macro mode, key rebinding, etc. There's still no software available at this point. Per key lighting can be a little fiddly to execute on the hardware, but if there's one thing I've learned from these boards is that they're absolutely loaded with shortcuts. So spend some time really getting to know the board and read the manual, and you're gonna have a much better experience with this board than simply taking it out of the box and running it. So for $119.99, do I like and recommend the Mecha Mini? Yeah. I absolutely do. Even now, nearly a year after I received and reviewed the original One Too Many, it's still my favorite 60% keyboard. And this is basically the final form of that board. It's a nearly perfect product. Other companies might do certain things better, like the Aero implementation on the Ampro is brilliant. But in terms of value, at $119.99, I think this represents a really solid value in keyboards because there's not anything Ducky does poorly. Quality stock keycaps, quality switches, quality case, great lighting, reassignment and customization, and stabs that are better than most. What I think people miss sometimes when having keyboard conversations is that it's not just about price point or feature set like wireless or hot swap. It's about build quality. This board feels right and sounds right because it's built right. If you're on a tighter budget, that's fine. No shame here at all, but I think it's foolish to look at something like the Ducky and say it's overpriced just because you can go get a Red Dragon or a Moto Speed on Amazon for a fraction of the cost. And I totally understand that switches are largely down to preference. Not everybody wants to use Cherry MX, and for those of you, this obviously isn't the board for you, but there is a reason why Cherry enjoys a reputation for quality and longevity. It's not that Ducky's products are perfect. They're not. They've had issues with key chatter or repeating keys in the past, and a small number of the first batch of these boards went out with screws that were a little too short. Nonetheless, Ducky puts a high priority on quality control in building their boards from quality products. When you really look at the fail rate and the issues from this year, the sheer amount of one too many keyboards and variants of that board that they shipped, those factories were pretty much running 24 seven night and day to meet demand. And the fact that the failure rate on those boards is so incredibly small is really impressive. And that's for the conversation versus custom. It's important to remember that we're talking about a production board for $119.99 here. We have to keep that in perspective. The vast majority of bare bones kits, case plate, PCB, clone stabs on KBD fans, cost more than this board alone. I'm talking everything but like the DZ65 RGB, the Tina, and the Mini 40. Then you're gonna buy switches, keycaps, probably decent stabs. Some group buy kits can easily go into the hundreds or even more. Most switches will run between 20 to 50 bucks to cover a 60%, with stuff like Zeal costing $70 or more. But if you're gonna be a bear, you may as well be a grizzly, right? Like, can you put together a custom for $120 that's gonna rival the quality and feature set of the Mecha Mini out of the box? It might make for an interesting video. Don't steal that. The only thing that would make this a more perfect board, in my opinion, would be to go with a hot swap PCB. That's the only thing stopping me from telling everyone to run out and buy it. A year ago, I would and did tell everyone to go run out and buy it. But the power of hot swapping is a really strong selling point moving into 2020. Also, I'm certain there's gonna be a white version of this at some point. It's not available now, and I don't have an official announcement date on that yet. As always, links for everything we talked about down in the description. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.